Welcome to Talking Politics with Dr. Oladipo. I am your regular host, Dr. Oladipo, the managing editor of The Eagle Online, which publishes at www.theeagleonline.com.ng. At last, the D Day is 24 hours away. That is talking about the 2023 general election in Nigeria, for which we have prepared in the last four years. It's a game changer for Nigerians for so many reasons. One is that the sitting president, the incumbent, Alaji Muhammadu Buhari, will not be recontesting as he has spent the maximum allowable two terms of eight years. And also, it is for Nigerians remarkable because those who are clamoring for change from the change they have been subjected to in the last eight years also wish to have their point made at the polls. How they make this will also depend on how well they troop out to vote. According to the Independent National Electoral Commission, out of the 93,469,008 registered voters, so far, 87,209,007 have picked up their permanent voter cards. What does this mean? How does it translate into electoral victory or fortune for the presidential candidates? who we have been focusing on in the past episodes of Talking Politics with Dr. Oladipo, are the things we'll be discussing on this edition of Talking Politics with Dr. Oladipo, which comes in partnership with one of the fastest growing YouTube channels worldwide, News Pop NG. We'll look at all of this in details and projects about those factors that will determine how Saturday's election, that is specifically the presidential election, will go. Let's start with a summary of what the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, told us on Thursday on the state of permanent voter cards and preparation for the election. According to Professor Yakubu, so far, 93.3% 93 of the 93,469,008 total registered voters have picked up their permanent voter cards, meaning that there are 6,259,229 voter cards still with the commission uncollected representing 6.7% of the total number of registered voters. According to Professor Yakubu, based on the documents he released, Lagos State has the highest number of collected permanent voter cards with 6,214,970. 940, followed by another big voter state, Kano, with 5,594,193. Kaduna State comes third with 4,164,473. And Katsina with 3,459,945. According to the document, Ekiti State has perhaps the least in terms of number of voters who have picked up their permanent voter cards. Ekiti has 987,647 voters with 958,052 having collected. In terms of percentage of collected voter cards, Ekiti State has however done extremely well as it recorded 97.0% collection. Curiously, and 
contrary to insinuations that the Southeast states have been shortchanged in the process of the collection of permanent voter cards, it is the Southwest states, in terms of percentage, that have some of the lowest rate of collection. For instance, Lagos State has a collection rate of 88%. For Oyo State, it is 84.3%. While Osho, Osho State seems to have perhaps the lowest at 81.5% collection rate. Yakubo also told us on Thursday that INEC is ready, whether in terms of cash, which he said the Central Bank of Nigeria has provided with a little left to be provided, or in terms of logistics, which is one of the areas in which there is always a nightmare in Nigeria concerning elections. Yakubu said, all arrangements have been completed. Let me quote him for the assurance of Nigerians. He said, we have completed arrangements with the transport unions for the final leg of the movement of personnel and materials to the polling units. They have assured us of their readiness to provide all vehicular needs of the commission for the election. But this is not to take away from the fact that, I mean, the fact that there is a pending case that will be determined today and perhaps in the next few hours, whether INEC should relate with the park management system led by the man who is popularly called MC Oluomo in terms of logistics deployment in Lagos State. Already, the deployment of materials, the sensitive ones inclusive, has begun all over the country, including Lagos State. Whether this court ruling will have any impact remains to be seen because that deployment, like we have said, has already started. And Yakubu did add in his briefing that the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited has assured the electoral agency of enough fuel for the distribution of the electron materials. Let me quote him again. He said, We are pleased that the NMPC Limited assured us that it will ensure availability of the products for the polls. Likewise, the Central Bank of Nigeria has assured us that it will provide us with the small amount of cash we require from our budget for cash payment to some critical service providers for the election. I must reiterate that the bulk of payment for works Goods and services are still paid for by electronic transfer. So, what happens tomorrow as a voter? The first thing is that before you approach your polling unit, you must have your permanent voter cards. No one without a permanent voter card is expected to get anywhere close to any polling unit. But some have also asked the question, with some of the realignments that INEC did in the past few months, which led to the announcement of the non-usage of some polling units, how do they locate their polling units with ease? And I provided the answer also by saying there are two steps that can be taken. One is that you can get your polling unit via SMS. That is what we popularly call a text message. So what do you do? You text the name of your state, your last name, and the last six digits of your voter identification number, that is the VIN, to either of two numbers. These are 
0906-283-0860 or 0906-283-0861. I take the numbers again. 0906-283-0860 or 0906-283-0861. And the second step which can be taken is for you to go on the INEC website, which is www.voters.inecnigeria.org or www.cvr.inecnigeria.org slash, that is the forward slash VVS. The website again, www.voters.inecnigeria.org or www.cvr.inecnigeria.org slash VVS. There, you'll get the name of your polling unit. And then, when you get to your polling unit, what happens there? After arriving with your PVC, you join the queue. You are then registered with the bimodal voter accreditation system. Unlike in the past, when you first get registered, and then you go on another queue to vote. INEC has made it easier. You can vote immediately once you are registered. And then once you vote, it's a choice you have to either wait until voting is concluded and counting is done, or you can leave. According to the INEC, registration of voters will open at 8.30 a.m., INEC said any attempt before 8.30 a.m. to use the beavers to register will not work because it has been so, pro so programmed that the timing is accurate. No beavers will work before 8.30 a.m. And then going by the instruction also, there will be a cutoff time. Usually this will be between 2 and 3 p.m. But in the case where voting starts late, that is with the accreditation, this can be extended by the senior officer of the commission there. And at such a time that has been fixed, the last person on the queue at that time will be allowed to vote. That is, nobody who is on the queue at the time fixed for cutting off of registration of voters will be denied the right to vote. And when this is done, that is voting, concluded, the votes are counted right in the presence of everybody who is present, especially the agents of the political parties. INEC also released the full details of all agents for the polls. And according to Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, all of them have been given accreditation tags in order to identify them. According to INEC, it has printed 1,642,385 identification cards for these political parties' agents. And they have been so handed over to the political parties for onward distribution. So the big question many have been asking is if anything has changed and if voters who have their PVCs have likely shifted their grounds on who to vote for in the presidential election on Saturday in Nigeria. The big question comes amid two major issues that have troubled the election coming up. 
in the last few weeks. These are the cashless policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And our Nigerians all over the country have reacted to it. And also the issue of security. For the APC, that is the All Progressive Congress, which is the government in power at the federal level, many believe that the cashless policy will work against its presidential candidate, Ashwa Dubala Ahmed Inumbu. But there are also those who have said and argued stridently that the narratives put up by governors elected on the platform of the party, especially those of Kaduna, Nasir Elrofai, Kogi Yaya Belu, Kano Abdullah Ganduji, and of recent, that of Ogun, Prince Dakwabi Odun, have shifted grounds in favor of the former two-term governor of Lagos State, who is vying to occupy the presidency. And why do they say so? They believe that the positions of these governors have shown that the cashless policy, as good as it is, is not a policy of the APC government at this time. In fact, for somebody like Nasir El Rufai, who headed the policy team of the APC, these were issues, including the removal of petroleum subsidy, that were contained in the policy document of the party submitted to the national leadership and which is also with President Muhammadu Buhari. So Nigerians, they believe, are going to see things in the light of the fact that the incoming government will very likely upturn the policy and throw it into the waste bin. For the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, many also believe that this will affect him because of the decision of the governors elected on the platform of his party to back the federal government over the implementation of the cashless policy. Two of them, Doye Diri of Bayelsa State and Obaseke, Godwin Obaseke of Edo State, showed up at the Supreme Court and decided to join themselves as respondents in the case which the Kano, Kaduna, Kogi, Zamfara, Ondo, Lagos, Ogun, and other states' governments being ruled by the APC brought against the Attorney General of the Federation who is standing in for the federal government. Atipu Abubakar himself has also said that the cashless policy is what were. Despite the reasoning of some that the position of the PDP is anti masses there are those who have argued that there is a need and quickly too to demonetize politicking in Nigeria, to demonetize elections and make it the free will of Nigerians. This also was the position of Peter Obi of the Labour Party, who said that painful as the cashless policy is, it will, in the end, in the long run, help Nigeria to have a money-free electioneering and voting in the long run. The fourth candidate for the presidency, who is also tipped to make some impact, that is Rabbi Kwakwansa of the New Nigeria People's Party, has not been too stringent in his position on the cashless policy, and many see him as not being here nor there. And then the issue of security. This is more frightening when people talk about the Southeast. Despite the efforts of the security agencies, with the police as the lead agency, 
at urban spate of violence around the country. This week, still witnessed the killing of a senatorial candidate of the Labour Party in Enugu State. It also witnessed the burning to death of a driver in the convoy of a member of the House of Representatives who is seeking re-election in the same state, and also an attack on the convoy of the governorship candidates of the All Progressives Congress in the same state. How this pans out for a region that is the southeast that is laying claim that it is his turn to produce the next president of the country waits to be seen. There are huge fears that of the over 10 million voters registered in the Southeast, it is unlikely that half of them will come out to vote. This is more so that one of those who claimed to be a disciple and follower of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazil Namdikanu, that is Simon Epa, who resides in Finland, has declared that there will be no election in Igbo land. Though Simon Epa was taken in by the police in Finland on Thursday, he has since been released. And according to available information, the voice note that was released saying that there will be no voting, no election in the whole of the Southeast was pre-recorded and not something that was done of recent. How this will affect the Southeast waits to be seen. But the Nigerian army has promised that it will not sit idly by and watch People run riots during the election. For all the states of the Federation, especially those of the Southeast, it has released hot lines through which emergency calls can be made and for quick response. Indeed, in Lagos State on Thursday, there was a show of force by the Nigerian army when it rolled out several armored tanks and for a bit, blocked the Lagos Ibadan Expressway on Otedola Bridge to show its preparedness to contain any form of violence. So, as the 87,209,007 voters cut across the Northwest, which has 21,445,000 Southwest with 15,536,213 voters who have picked up their PVCs. The North Central with 14,603,621. South South with 13,284,920. North East with 11,937,769. And South East with 10,400,000. 1,484 voters prepare for the election on Saturday, which is less than 24 hours from now. We are talking politics with Dotsun Oladipo and Newspop NG. Promise you up-to-date information. Very fast, very quick, and in manner in which you quickly understand them and easily too as the countdown goes on. I am your regular host, and I hope to catch you frequently over the weekend and up until Monday, Tuesday, when hopefully the final results of the presidential election will be announced from time to time. Thank you and catch you.